Quentin Tarantino. Now, I don't think I'll ever do one for Tarantino because he doesn't have that long of a filmography, but he does make really good movies about past cinemas and homaging to them. Django Unchained is either my second or third favorite. I really like this movie. It's about essentially a love story about Kerry Washington, about Jamie Foxx getting out of slavery, having the opportunity to save his wife, and he's willing to do anything, any means necessary to get to her, which makes him very likable and very heroic type of character. This whole movie is homaging westerns, which westerns and especially spaghetti westerns i have no interest or any experience in at all it's something that's there but i'm not like hell yeah i'm gonna get ready to watch i don't know the good the bad and the ugly or i don't know something like that right but then this movie the way that it's just made by tarantino makes me really want to watch western because it looks like fun so dicaprio's playing this guy who is just clearly racist and thinking you know black people fight with each other as if it's like a boxing match or a game to them he's a very bad awful character but his dialogue is so ridiculous that it makes him very memorable and very like yeah this guy is awful but man he's a lot of fun to watch and same thing for samuel L. jackson who's really the villain of this movie like he's the actual real villain for this like slavery stuff with dicaprio's character he's the one that figures out that dicaprio and schultz are here for Kerry washington not really here to buy off some people here and there seems like he's the one that's got the brains of being like okay you're shady you're shady you're sus the dialogue from him is pretty funny mainly because samuel jackson he's also really good as well but this is just kind of elevated and turned up to like 11 essentially dr king schultz he might be the best character because he's a bounty hunter he got jamie fox out of his chains and whatnot but the actor playing him is so charismatic and just does whatever the hell he wants because he is a bounty hunter makes it so fun like whenever he goes into that town and just shoots like the sheriff i think like violently as well and then goes in get the drink talk to jamie fox comes out being like hey what up i just shot this person and he's able to get away with that it's super badass fun to watch like this whole movie is so much fun to watch it might actually be fun to rewatch it again just because it's very rewatchable and then jamie fox's whole arc is getting back to carrie washington throughout the movie especially near the end where dicaprio brings her shows them the scars and whatnot and it's a very tense moment of being like is he gonna go crazy is he gonna draw his gun and shoot dicaprio and samuel jackson but he doesn't and then him getting his revenge on the people that whipped him cool to see as well Maybe that guy that got whipped on his ear it sounded and looked brutal as fuck which also the gore it is amazing that end scene where schultz starts the shooting and then when he dies and gets shot books and pages starts flying around excessive over the top gore was amazing that one poor guy that like got shot on his leg felt so bad for him like you know he died obviously but damn that was brutal it was so much fun to watch and then that one lady that jimmy fox shoots like being pulled by like a wire that was pretty damn funny just shooting the goes flying like what the hell was that and then getting to see samuel jackson get shot both of his kneecaps gone out same motherfucker and then him dying in a big ass dynamite explosion jimmy fox looks so cool he's on a horse both him and carrie washington and then that's how the movie ends music most of the music i really like the jingle theme was amazing the schultz theme where he has his tooth on this wagon that was really awesome the only thing that's a negative for me is there are a lot of like before they get to dicaprio and you know candy cotton there's a lot of shots of them on horses riding and going through you know mississippi and or mississippi to jersey or wherever there is a lot of that which i do get you get to hear the music or whatnot but it was like okay let's get to you know wherever you're gonna get at but aside from that Django unchained is really fun and might be the most rewatchable of tarantino's filmography once upon a time in hollywood is the opposite for me from Django, where it's homaging the 60s of cinema and just overall 60s in general and the change from black and white western or just black and white from the new decade of the 70s and new filming but i don't know aside from that this movie is just not really for me it's still well made there's not a bad tarantino movie i just don't find it interesting i think it revolves around the whole manson family stuff which is like sure you know and i don't know just this is my second time watching it the first time i thought it was okay and so rewatching, i was like okay you know what new perspective fresh mind let's go right i thought it was okay you know it's like eh you know whatever so brad pitt and dicaprio are dying stars brad pitt is a stuntman for dicaprio in his movies and slowly he's just seen his career die out he was a mainstream icon and now he's doing commercials of dancing and singing and whatnot he wants his life and career to turn around and the whole movie is just them driving around los angeles in the 60s seeing stories in their life you know and yeah i don't know Brad Pitt even sees Bruce Lee which I believe when this movie came out there's a big issue in backlash around the portrayal of Bruce Lee and it's fine like Tarantino is allowed to do his own version of Bruce Lee everyone knows Bruce Lee he's a badass right but this is also coming from Brad Pitt's perspective and so I saw 
saw that as him being like, you know what? I totally beat Bruce Lee. I totally beat his ass, you know? Even though it could be a complete lie, you know? We don't know because it is coming from him. It might be a very biased telling of his story. And so I didn't really have an issue with that really. But like the backlash on his movie, looking back on it, felt just really unnecessary. And then Marco Robbie, I forgot about her in this movie. So when she came up, I was like, oh yeah, she's in this movie. I think Bradford takes her to do something. It ties all back into the whole Manson stuff during that time, which I don't know much about. I think it's about killing a Manson family. I don't know anything about that. There's like a fire that burns into the pool and Brad Pitt, despite not being like the official stuntman for him anymore because they've gotten past that, he's still there trying to protect him, trying to be his stuntman. Goes to the hospital, the capper meets this one dude in his neighborhood and that's how the movie ends essentially. Like this movie isn't really for me. If you love cinema and enjoy, you know, the backstory about late 60s cinema and whatnot, this movie's for you. But if you don't really care about that like me and DiCaprio driving around LA in 1969, seeing the careers fall off, being selfish and whatnot. I didn't find it all too intriguing at all, really. Just thought this is all right. And that was it for DiCaprio's filmography from Quentin Tarantino to Opposites, where Django's really good, really like it, really rewatchable. Once Upon a Time, you know, 60s cinemas, what a time, you know, not really for me. So that is it for me. This has been The Road So Far, and thank you for watching.